Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about probably the oldest trading trick and scam in the book. I was a victim to this scam on Magic Online Trading League, which was pretty much Puker Trade before Puker Trade became easy to use and massive scam itself. But Magic Online Trading League was a forum where you would post your wants and what you wanted to buy as well as what you had to trade and the people would trade with each other based on reputation points somebody would have to send out first someone would have to receive first and it would always be based on reputation so until you got over a hundred reputation points it was most likely you were just going to send small cards to get the reference points now magic Trading on YouTube, I did try trading on YouTube for a little bit of time. It wasn't as useful. Uh, very, very beginning of YouTube, the only videos you can see were YouTube trade binder videos. So they would literally be videos of people and me. I did it too on a new law student. I did it every month. I would flip through my trade binder and then people be like, no, I want this card. I want that card. I want this card. And then we would trade for a certain card. Well, I also was scammed using this tactic. The tactic is very simple. Uh, this, in this particular instance, it's an eBay tactic, but the what you would do is the same, is you would send the cards, or in this case, the sealed product, you would get paid, then the buyer would say, okay, I wanna make a return. And they, so this is the sent product of Modern Masters. The buyer would make a return. Now there's two reasons a lot of buyers return stuff. One in this case is because they opened all the product and sent empty boxes back. And two, if the price changes. So in transportation, the price can change. And I've seen this happen a ton of times up and down, especially recently with the reprints. You hear all these stories about how stores, once a card becomes expensive, they don't want to engage it or they don't want to continue anymore because they don't want to sell it for the new expensive price. So they cancel orders. In reverse, when someone is trying to trade you cards and those cards go down in value, the person receiving can often say, no, I don't want to do the trade anymore, trade backs. And this was the wild, wild west because the systems in place this was before smartphones, that everyone has a smartphone and a data plan that could support it. And people just made the most ridiculous trades. I remember trading, and some of them were very good and some of them are very bad. And I've had really bad trades and I had very good trades, but it's just so random. This particular scam on eBay is very simple. Uh, someone buys the boxes, then they open the boxes, then they send the empty boxes back and ask for a refund. These are the empty boxes that get sent back. Now in reverse, eBay and tracking and shipping, the mail people don't know what you sent, the box is sealed. There's no way to know who opened the boxes. The reverse reverse scam, which I've also seen a few times, is the person sent the sealed boxes back and then the person receiving it opened the boxes themselves and then took a photo. All of this is very difficult to prove. I only engage with people I highly trust. When we were YouTube trading, it like people would not trust Warby at all. They would start a YouTube channel, have a mega binder, and then be gone within the first trade. You cannot trust people on YouTube to trade. It was one of the most ridiculous. When I go back into the history of Magic, I've been playing Magic since beta. The most ridiculous period was from, I would say, during college, so it was 2006 and to 2009 or 2010. After that period, people had smartphones with data plans and then price checking became very, very common. But before that period, you had people who knew what stuff was worth and then you had people who didn't. On Magic Online Trading League, you could always see like who was a newbie and that newbie would be posting stuff and it would be 50% cheaper than they should be. And then people were just like, shark around them and feed the scams were so common because there's no repercut there was no repercussion to starting a youtube trade binder to doing this 
and there was no proof. You couldn't prove it. The tracking said it was shifted. The PayPal said that, you know, the refund was issued. I just find that it is incredibly, you guys have it good now. Now everyone can buy cards easily. TCG player will make it good or you buy from a large vendor or you buy from a local game store. Back when I was trading in two, heavily in 2006 to 2010, you, it was crazy how many, quote, packages got lost in the mail, how many times people sent packages without tracking, how many times that you, you see a list and literally it's the person asking. So it's not like I, we negotiated or I negotiated. Well, when Jace was 100 bucks, a person put it in as like 10 bucks. I was like, all right, I'll buy your four Jaces. And he delivered. I, I was like, okay, I did not expect this to come, but all right, I took the risk and I was rewarded. And you got burned. I bought about $200 of Zendikar, original Zendikar Fetchlands. I believe that was 2010, maybe. And I got burned. I never, they never sent it. And I didn't, he said it was lost and he had shipped it without tracking. And that was $200 gone. There was no accountability. There was no third parties. And actually, actually, let me tell you the history of trading. And you guys will enjoy this. It used to be that there were people, I, I forget their names. They would call it something kind of strange uh, based on the magic card. And what you would do is they would be trusted people. And I would send a package to them. And then the other person would send another package to them. And then they would. this person would receive both packages. I would send a gift, like uh, either PayPal money or a $5 card. The other person would also spend, send PayPal money or a $5 card. And then this person would have both packages and then he would make sure that we, I received mine and the person I was going to send to originally or the end sender or the end receiver would receive his or hers. And this used to be like this middleman used to be in every single big deal I've ever done over a over $500, I had a middleman and the middleman was normally a moderator or someone who had a thousand plus references. We don't do that anymore. Obviously that's not something that happens anymore, but I, I remember it fondly because you really knew that middleman like pretty well. Uh, you knew about my middleman was actually a woman and she lived in Texas. And that was when I was living in, I never met her. It would be interesting to meet her. I don't, I have to, probably lost my user account, a uh, password and stuff. But if I went back, I would, cause she probably did about 20, 25 big deals for me. Uh, sometimes the deals weren't 500, but like a hundred, anything over 500, I would use a middleman. Anything less, like around 100, 200, I tried to just, you know, see if I can trust the person or hopefully that person would send to me first and then I would send back. Now I don't even trade anymore because online it's not worth my time because all the bad things that can happen like will happen i've experienced people who have bought like very expensive cards and then sent them back because the conditioning wasn't right and they sent me different cards and that's really hard to prove even though i have the scans and stuff it's hard to prove because you can always say it got damaged in the mail or as a seller you you are always at risk for as a online seller of magic cards where a lot of these older valuable cards are based on conditions i used to sell foils i don't i used to sell power nine i don't anymore because it's not worth the money it's not worth the stress i can be doing so much more than selling magic cards for the same amount of money but i do it because i thought it was really fun at the time now it's not that fun anymore because the stress of what the buyer is going to do, you, you have no idea who the buyer is. You're no, you have no idea who, how they're going to behave. And when you look at the big YouTubers, uh, Rudy sells boxes and that's kind of harder to disprove that you sent like a damaged box. But the large YouTubers for the most part don't trade. I think the reason is there's too much risk on our side. Uh, the risk would be, oh, you know, we have a reputation. It's just easier for me to not trade and not have to deal with the mess that comes with it i don't know i think it's interesting these ebay scams are very common uh, when a deal is too good to be true it probably is too good to be true and that's what you have to understand is at the core end of the day 
people are not idiots. Everyone who's on eBay has internet. And these scams have been well documented. These scams have been well practiced. People have been scamming people on eBay for as long as it's been around. And they will continue to get better and they continue to get more optimized. I remember a scam by Jackie Chang, a guy who said his name was Jackie Chang. And then he had a picture and he was, it didn't look anything like Jackie Chang. And I remember he was scamming people of alpha boxes that he wanted to sell. And what happened is he would, quote, sell you an alpha box or he would sell you the opportunity to sell alpha boxes for very cheap. And what you would do is you would get it from the eBay buyer. They would pay you. Then you would fund the money to him and he would send the box to you. And then you would get be the middleman and you would get a profit. Well, that doesn't work well if he doesn't if he doesn't send a box after receiving the money. Selling a alpha box for ten thousand dollars is pretty easy. That's not something that's going to be difficult to do. Any person can do it. But then after you're done selling it, you got to buy it. And even though the person who Jackie Chang says he'll buy he'll sell you the box for five thousand dollars, and you pay him the five thousand dollars, guess what? You not only lost the five thousand dollars. But you have to refund the $10,000 because you don't have a box. Jackie Chang is never going to send you a box. And that's one of the most funny scams. It came, all these scams come in Florida. I think most of these scams I've heard of, especially in digital marketing, like the scam agencies, like they are all in like Florida for some reason. I'm not sure why it is the case, but like every scam I've uh, encountered, at least on, as, own, as an agency owner, has been like people in Florida for some reason. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.